Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is The Word with Joy and my name is Nima Ovori. Hello, welcome to the channel. Um, I hope you've been blessed and you're having a great day so far. Um, welcome and thank you for tuning in. As usual, if you like the video at the end, do click on the like button, do that, and share with your friends, your family, your loved ones, whoever you think might benefit from the video if you have. And finally, do subscribe if you haven't already, um, and click on the notific notifications bell so you are notified when a new video comes out, which is every Tuesday and Thursday, 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Okay, all right, we're gonna get continuing from last time, which was the Lord is my shepherd. And uh, we know that verse, Psalm 23, verse one, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So we pray to our Lord, who's our shepherd, to shepherd us today in the discussion. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be part of this um, discussion today and that you will reveal to us your word. You help us to understand, we we'll have a heart to really understand, and to grasp it, and you give us the grace to do your word. And that in the end, you will take all the glory, we will be super blessed, and the enemy will be forever ashamed and defeated in our lives in jesus name amen amen okay so i think we we talked about the egypt uh the israelites and how god was like you know responding to their cry because he had that relationship so it's very important you yeah, need to have that relationship with god so that you can then call on him and cry to him and he'll respond to you psalm 50 verse 15 says psalm 50 verse 15 1 5 it says um Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. So that is like something that, you know, as our Lord and the owner of everything, and as we saw with the um, Israelites, calling upon God will cause him to answer by delivering and also you will glorify him. So it's like a big deal. Okay, it's not just, hey, I got you out of that situation or whatever. No, in the end, it's like glory has to go back to him. You know, if it's not, if it's not something that is like great and marvelous and amazing, I mean, no, let me take that back because, of course, every day that we are alive is already a miracle because I don't control my breathing. I don't know what's happening in the next minute. God already, God doesn't because I live and I see the things and the days go by and the months and the years. That's because of his mercies. So, yes, but I'm talking about like, you know, when you have in that like dire situation and you're just like, only God can save me right now. Remember that interview I had where it was like, I just, I messed up twice, two opportunities to work on Excel and it was like, it was very bad. For me to get the job and now be rolling in the V lookups and uh, pivot tables is uh, is truly a miraculous act of God. All right, because I was normally human speaking, I should have just been thrown off the whole like, the you know, I should not have been considered at all. Do you understand? So those are the kind of things where you're like, God help me, and because you have that relationship with God, because you have that relationship with the Lord, who's owner and maker of everybody and everything. He can step in there and deliver you and glorify him. Do you see how, like, I have to glorify him now because I'm like, I know I didn't do it by myself. I know I didn't get that job on my own. I know I, I bombed on my own. It was horrible. Okay? I was beating myself up for days. I was like, how did you mess up like that? So for the coin to flip and everything work out, that was because obviously God was in it. And he delivered me. And he's now being glorified. So encouragement for you, wherever you are, what situation if God is your shepherd, if the Lord, make of the heavens and the earth, is your shepherd, he can deliver you out of that and he will be glorified in that situation. So just look for the glory. You know what I mean? Like look for God. You you have to just glorify yourself. Look for that glory in there. I know Jesus talks about that in John. Um, I didn't even have this on my thing, but I think it's John 17 where it says that when we pray to God that he will be glorified, when we, when we pray, he will answer us that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Let me see if I can find it really quickly. Otherwise, I'll put up the, um, yeah, John 14, uh, verse 13. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. In the end, like, we just, when you ask God for something and he does it, he answers. It's so that he's, he will receive all the glory, okay, back for what he has done for you. All right, so anyway, so that aside, just trying to emphasize that, you know, you have to have that relationship so that you can call on him. So your expectation will make sense. You know, it's like, I'm calling you. It's like, you know, like I said the other time, someone, random stranger, baby, is not going to be calling you, expecting you to do anything because you don't have a relationship. It's like, you're even a danger, stranger danger. Like, they don't want to talk to you. They want to talk to their, God, their, their own dad. They want to talk to their own mom or their auntie or whoever is there that came with them. Um, so similarly, we want to maintain that relationship with God. And why though? What is so 
you know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So what is it I shall not want about? What is, what is the benefit of now God being my shepherd? I shall not want. So I know, you know, we can look at the rest of Psalm 23 later. But for right now, just this little, like, spot. Like, okay, I shall not want. What is that? Psalms 53 verse, um, sorry, Psalm 103. No, Psalm 53. Psalm 103. I think it's verse 3. Let's run there. Um, okay, well, verse, we can start from verse 1. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, the Lord, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I forget not all his benefits. So, uh, he has benefits. Okay, and here they come. Who forgives all your iniquities? Remember when we talked about sin? The wages of sin is death. The soul that sinners shall die. So being forgiven from your iniquity is a big deal. All right. It's a big deal. And we know that the provision was made through Jesus Christ's death, through the death of Jesus Christ, that we all who believe in him have become, have given the power to become sons of God. John 1, 12. I believe this is wrong. I'll change it in the thing. Um, so that is, he has, he has forgiven our iniquities. For him to forgive our iniquities, it means that we don't owe that debt of death anymore. We don't owe that debt for the transgressions and for the iniquities and for the sin and for the disobedience. The wrath of God is not coming upon us because he has forgiven our iniquities. Um, continue on verse three. Who forgives, oh, who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? All right. Remember like when Jesus Christ went on the cross, before he even went on the cross, he already did that, right? Remember Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53 verse 5, Isaiah 53 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. So sickness doesn't come and disease is just to be like, hi, hey, we're just here to hang out. No, they, they want to kill. Okay. It's a disease because it wants to like terminate. It wants to destroy something. It wants to take away your time. It wants to take away your strength. It just wants to lead to destruction. Remember John 10, 10, um, where he talks about the thief who comes to steal, kill and destroy. But God has come to give us life and that more abundantly. And it's, that chapter even talks about being a good shepherd, which you can look at another time. Um, but yes, so one of the benefits in addition to, our iniquities being taken away, meaning now we are we are, we, are, we don't have those debts upon us anymore about for the sins and transgressions. Also, in addition to that, your diseases are healed. So you can say and speak to that pain by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. Therefore, I have not received this. I reject it. No matter how long it takes, guys, just don't stop. Just keep believing, believing. Hold on to your faith and watch that thing like shrink 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 and disappear and disappear disappear finally from your lives in jesus and just hold on to it keep speaking the word against that thing that is one of the benefits that is one of the i shall not want god has given me healing he has he has given me healing through the stripes of jesus christ the blood of jesus christ and forgiveness for our sins uh moving on wrong he redeems your life from destruction remember john 3 16 god saw the world he gives only son those who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life because there is eternal destruction out there happening after death is life forever a life in eternity with god or a life uh somewhere down way down below in hell so when it says he redeems us from destruction it's like that i just think of that ultimate destruction i am delivered from that ultimate destruction i'm only here just like a child of god and great it's like there's the, there was a destruction coming you know what i mean i like, don't think about Oh, great, I'm going to heaven. It's it's wonderful. But the reason why you're doing that is because you're not going somewhere else, which is crazy, wild. You don't want to go there. Nobody knows. Even your enemy. You don't want anybody to go there. All right? And But he, that is one of the benefits. That is one of the I shall not want that has come out of God being our shepherd. It's all these wonderful and beautiful things. And it keeps going on. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. So your crown works on your head. What everybody sees is like loving kindness, which is favor and tender mercies and goodness. That is what goes around with you. Even, of course, Psalm 23 verse 6, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That is it. God is the one who has crowned us with that. So you can wake up and say, I thank you, Lord, because you have crowned me with goodness and your loving mercies and your tender mercies. So this day I expect great things because that my crown, if people see a crown, they're like, you know, they respect the crown. They have to see. You can't unsee it. So when I'm walking around, I have that crown of tender mercies 
and goodness around on me. And you do too if you're a child of God. All right? And it goes on. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Talked about speaking the word of God to those things, the sicknesses or whatever. Remember we talked about also our captivating every thought, our words. is so important. If we open our mouths, God will fill it with good things. Fill it with his words. Remember his angels, which is also in this chapter, 103 verse 20. Bless you. Bless the Lord, you, his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Those words that we speak, call those angels to do it. I mean, it's like, I'm not going to exhaust everything of all the benefits. We haven't even gone to Ephesians 1, where we talk about the spiritual blessings in heavenly places, how God has given us the spirit of, of um wisdom and of power and how jesus christ gave us all power luke 10 19 to trample over snakes and scorpions and every power of the enemy like there's just so many benefits like why aren't you keen into this relationship with god with jesus christ doesn't make any sense so the video we're, we're gonna round up now but i just want to encourage whoever if you have not started that issue but you want to or you would love to just say a quick prayer father in the name of jesus i realize i'm a sinner i realize that i'm outside of the fold i'm not right now one of your sheep but i need you to be my lord and to be my shepherd i recognize that you are god and i come to you in humility and i repent of all my sins i ask that you take away all my sins wash me in the blood of jesus i believe in the blood of jesus i believe in the sacrifice i believe now also in his death and resurrection and I pray that my life be turned over to you. You become Lord of my life. You become Lord of every situation of my life. And that I'll begin to, to gain this wonderful and amazing benefits of salvation, of deliverance, of healing, of goodness, of a crown of tender mercies in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. It's super simple. That's it. Don't let the devil lie to you. And then just get in the word. Or if you have a Bible app, that's fine too. All right, so God bless you guys. I hope you've been encouraged. The Lord is my shepherd. He's your shepherd. If you are in the fold, uh, we may continue. We may not. We'll see. But yeah, for, for right now, this is it. God bless you. Thank you once again. Send me a message by my email or down below in the comment section. Take care. God bless you. It's been the world with joy. My name is Imo Vori. 